Hello there, and thank you all for joining our digital thread video series. In this initial part of the series, we will be covering the first phase, which is concept development. We will take a look at what exactly digital thread is and how it's woven into the concept development stage. A little bit about myself, my name is Bill and I'm a CAD technical specialist. And my experience includes positions in industrial design, rendering and additive manufacturing. A little bit about PDS Vision. Um, PDS Vision is a global provider of services focused on helping companies successfully enable their digital transformation journey. We are considered the leading and trusted advisor within the product development sectors. And we achieve this by combining best in class software solutions, technical support and professional training with divisions located across the globe. We also provide technology solutions that enhance how products are developed and manufactured. Below is a timeline. A lot of you probably know us previously as Boundary Systems. Boundary Systems was founded between 2005 and six in Cleveland, Ohio. PDS Vision Group was founded between 2007 and eight in Stockholm, Sweden. And in 2009, Boundary Systems became a preferred Winchell partner. In between 2013 and 14, Boundary Systems expanded globally into South Africa. Between 2017 and 18, PDS Vision Group acquired Boundary Systems. And more recently, between 2019 and 20, PDS Vision Group acquired Net in Germany. Software solutions that we provide are the PTC software suite, including Creo Parametric, Creo Simulate, Creo Machining, Windchill, and ThingWorks. Beside the PTC software suite, we also have other software solutions, such as eTraj, Moldex 3D, and Keyshot. And focus areas of ours include CAD, CAM, simulation, data management, product lifecycle management, as well as IoT. And now let's move to Digital Thread and talk about what that is. Digital Thread provides a comprehensive approach to the application of PTC software suite. You just get back here relative to the intersection of the individual applications and where they're utilized in the manufacturing process. This philosophy leads to reduced time to market, reduced downtime in production, reduced costs, and an increase in overall manufacturing efficiency. In this series, we aim to illustrate the importance of the interconnectivity of the digital thread by showing the production of a car, but the concepts can be applied to whatever product you produce at your organization. In this example, my role at our fictional car manufacturing company is a designer focusing on the exterior concept. Join me as I show the thread woven through different aspects of my work. We will now begin by looking at these aspects of design manufacturing, CAD, CAD management, simulation, and design for manufacturing. So let's take a look at the components in our PLL system, PLM system and look for a top level assembly. Now that we found it, we can view its relevant information before moving to the assembly structure. Before we check the car assembly out to Creo, let's first take a look at the bomb and make sure that the structure is correct and contains the required assemblies. Now that we have the digital thread car assembly checked out to Creo, we can see that it contains multiple assemblies that make up different systems of the car. I've been working in freeform modeling in the freeform modeling environment suited to designs with a high degree of curvature and also have access to different stages of the design through saved checkpoints in the model. I'll also be using the car concept to produce downstream deliverables such as 3D renderings, files for 3D printing, flow simulation to test aerodynamics, and the sharing of an augmented reality experience. Let's now take a look at a few different stages of our car's development and you can get a quick glimpse of the progression here. We've also received some feedback on flow testing done in our simulation software. And it's been suggested that we run another test after adjustments are made to the rear of, of the vehicle. Here's a before and after image. 
our design team has also agreed that changes need to be made to the passenger seat. So we'll make an adjustment to the seat base and extend that out past the brackets. The curvature on the side of the seat will also have to be adjusted. As well as the height and the width of the headrest and the angle and height of the backrest. We are now running different flow tests on different adjustments that we've made to the car. Based on what we've seen so far, it looks like we're getting closer to our goal and we'll need to complete a physical test in our wind tunnel. We will now look at the CAD, additive manufacturing, and augmented reality aspect of design manufacturing. Before we can move to testing a physical prototype in the wind tunnel, we need to create a 3D printed model. And what we're seeing now is the lattice structure of the 3D printed model and also the realistic prototype created from the 3D print. Okay, so now we're also going to test different production configurations. We have a few body types that are just a little bit unique to one another as well as a few different tire sets. Our goal is to get an understanding of how well these different configurations work with one another. And now that we have that, here are a few rendered images of the car with different tire sets. We've also gotten word that some members of the team will not be present to review the 3D printed model. So they're requesting an augmented reality experience of the model to view in their remote locations. After all this work, we now have these deliverables, a modified design of the shell of the car, a modification to the passenger seat, 3D rendered images of the different tires, a flow simulation completed in the software to test aerodynamics, a 3D printed model for physical flow simulation in the wind tunnel, a realistic prototype, and an augmented, re an augmented reality experience. Let's now check the assembly back in and review the assembly structure to make sure that it reflects the changes that were made. Now that the assembly is checked back in, engineering can make the necessary design changes, analysis, and revisions. You will see what happens next in this car development in the next video of our series. Tools used in this project are freestyle modeling, design exploration extension, Keyshot, Creo Simulate Live, Creo Lattice, Op Options Modeler, Creo Illustrate, and Vuforia Studio. So freestyle modeling, uh, this tool is a benefit to users with an art and design background, and it provides a free flowing, flexible 3D modeling style. And it's great for designs that have an organic shape and a high degree of curvature. The design exploration extension provides an incremental visual capture of a product's design development. And this is done through saved checkpoints throughout the design process. Um, saved checkpoints contain all model all model features associated with a product at specific points in time and provides a visual understanding of the processes and changes made throughout the design of a product. Keyshot, uh, this, this Keyshot software provides easy access to 3D rendering through a plugin within Creo. And it's great for conceptualization and validation of the visual design intent of your product. And, it up, and updates made in Creo will be reflected in the 3D rendering software with a click of a button. Creo Simulate Live, it provides instant feedback on your design decisions, um, analysis updates in real time as you edit, create new features or change properties. It performs structural, thermal, and modal analysis on 3D CAD designs. And flow simulation enables you to iterate on your designs faster with real time computational fluid dynamics feedback within Creo. And it's created especially for design engineers. Uh, Creo Lattice. It gives you an automated creation of lattice structures with full B-REP geometry, and it's a single feature with parametric control over all aspects of the lattice structure. It's also an emerging solution, an emerging emerging solution to weight, 
energy and advanced manufacturing time reduction. Its analysis is also integrated with FEA simulations. Options Modeler, this allows you to create multiple product configurations, achieve faster design cycles by creating and validating product platforms in 3D early in the design phase. Allows you to optimize products earlier by automating manually intensive error prone tasks and helps to increase design and engineering productivity by improving communication with customers, suppliers, and coworkers. Creo Illustrate, this is used to create 3D technical illustrations, animated sequences, and 2D drawings at scale and with speed. It automatically updates content as engineering and design changes happen, and it sets the foundation for an augmented reality strategy. Euphoria Studio, uh, this helps you to modernize your training and work instructions, transform your existing CAD and IoT data into detailed AR experiences that provide critical information to frontline workers when they need it most, um, helps to increase worker productivity and satisfaction, reduce cost, reduce the cost of errors, waste, and accidents, and also will help improve your customer experiences. All right, so a little bit about training capabilities. If you want to learn more about digital thread or different aspects of it, um, we do have training that's available either on site where we are or on site at your location. And we also have training that we can do virtually due to COVID restrictions. And you can also check our website to view the full scheduled class list. All right, if you guys require further information, you can always contact me directly at bdrosos at pdsvision.net. If you have to get in touch with sales, you can contact, you can contact sales as well. And you can also visit our website, pdsvision.us. And we have a bunch of videos on YouTube. So just search for PDS Vision to find those videos. Okay, so if you guys have any questions at this point, we'll open up the floor for questions. If you guys want to ask anything, feel free to enter your question in the chat. Okay. So I don't see anything in the chat. So I'll just go ahead and um, close off the webinar. So I, I appreciate you guys for joining. And I hope you learned a little about digital thread and um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot.